So, um, I think now we can proceed, and um, we have, um, before, uh, you know, um, the break, we have um, to give you, Manolis and I, some, um, uh, a, a global um, uh, talk on, on, uh, on HERA. I, I will do, you know, I will survey what the, the outcomes of uh, HERA were, and uh, basically I will do the past and Manolis will do the future. <laughs> and he's such a visionary person, right, <laughs> Manolis? So. Okay, so let me, can I have my, uh, I'm not sure how I have to do it here. Oh, okay, I should, but it's not the same, what I have here is not the same what I have. Okay, now it's, now it's better. By the I can use this, I think. Okay, now, okay, this is, so we will survey the, the, the major outcome uh, of, um, of HERA, and um, just make sure that this is working. So, okay, good. So, uh, as, as you know, or the, the aim of HERA was to develop a European research and innovation agenda on environment, climate, and health, and covering key strategic research and, and also uh, policy aspects. This was the major aim. It was a three-year project, actually a little bit more than three years, three years and three months, because of the COVID, 15 countries, 24 partners, and actually a very wide expertise, very multidisciplinary uh, expertise. This is the timeline that um, uh, we have followed. I'm trying to see if I can use this. Yeah, yeah, you can, I think everybody can see. Yeah, this is the timeline that, um, uh, from HERA, where it started. Now it's basically, this is almost the end uh, of HERA. What we call the official HERA uh, is, is ending, but obviously Manolis will tell you more about the unofficial HERA. And <laughs> I found this, uh, Manolis. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so we went through different stages. We actually produced very quickly, even after the first year, an interim agenda that was also taken on board by the, uh, by the commission. And, you know, that was uh, uh, here, okay? So almost one year after the beginning uh, of HERA, it was a performance. And very quickly also, which is maybe not shown clearly here, we have produced uh, also an agenda for COVID and then went back to the final agenda, and now we, have, we can have this final conference presenting these, um, uh, these agenda. And um, basically, uh, just let me tell you more about the methodology of HERA. We call it a Y-shape uh, you know, consultation, where on, on one hand, we had to gather the uh, knowledge gaps from a scientific point of view, but also on, on the other hand, we needed to identify the research needs in particular from the stakeholders and, and the policy aspect. We did surveys, we interrogated people, and then after this, we ended up um, uh, putting up this uh, agenda with the, with the different research goals. As you will see, there were six uh, research goals and which was put under consultation, and then we made some last you know, minute changes, and it says we had this uh, final agenda that was submitted at the end, uh, basically, of last year. And we spent much of the time of this, uh, this year you know, making some communication about it and, and presenting the, uh, the agenda. There were many challenges. Of course, it's always not so easy to match the you know, research objective and policy needs. I mean, this is at what, an important part uh, of our work. And I'd like to thank also the, the stakeholders here that we have um, um, interviewed and, and uh, surveyed, and they have, were really very helpful in, in this respect. Um, these, as somebody mentioned, um, actually everybody mentioned, it, these are complex issues. Linking environment, climate, and health is complex. It's difficult. This is why, in, in general, there is a lot of uncertainty going on, and this is why we need to do more, more robust research to be able to provide, you know, um, conclusions to the to the policymakers. These are also long-term issues. It's not something that you can do uh, very quickly, and that's also very important. Um, we had also to um, uh, increase the coordination among different communities. Um, there were people you know, from um, yeah, toxicologists, epidemiologists, um, computational scientists, uh, people in the climate, uh, more interested in, in, in the climate and other in ecosystems. So it was really a wide variety of people that we had to put together and we, had, we needed some system thinking to be able uh, to do that. And uh, essentially we had 
really from the beginning focused on uh, different type of systems. Uh, the, 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 the first one was um, is on the uh, stressors themselves, you know, the environmental exposure. What were the stressors? Air pollution, chemicals, um, endocrine disruptor, whatever. I mean, all these stressors and, and develop work and identify what are the needs on these stressors. The second was on problem-based issues. What, is, uh, what about cities? What about transport? What about work? What about occupational study? I mean, this, this is more a different system that integrates actually a number of different stressors. And, and the third system was more holistic, more global. It was, you know, climate change, ecosystem, um, planetary health, etc. So these are the different systems that we were um, working on uh, during the preparation uh, of this agenda. And essentially, um, if I would like to uh, summarize the six uh, research goal and the objective of these six research goals, this is actually in this uh, slide, where first we wanted to reduce, to reduce the effect, for example, on health of, you know, how to reduce the effect of climate uh, crisis and, and biodiversity loss on, um, on health and on the environment. We wanted to promote, promote healthy lives um, in cities and promote sustainable and inclusive societies. We wanted to prevent chemical stressors, physical stressors, the, all these different uh, type of, of stressors improve some uh, methodologies, uh, in particularly those that allow uh, a better assessment of the impact of environment um, uh, on, on health, and, and develop implementation research, develop infrastructures, I will go into that a little bit later, if, if you don't have the right infrastructure, you, can, you, know, you can't do really much, and also at the end promote transformational change, because societies cannot adapt, and cannot find the right way to uh, become resilient to all these changes and, and improve themselves, then it's really difficult to achieve uh, anything. So these are the main, you summarized actually the, the, the agenda, maybe I can stop here, I will not stop here, of course, I will go uh, through those. So these are put together in six research goals, where we have the three first research goals on the different systems that I was talking about, the stressors, the, 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 the problem-based and, and the global. Um, and then we have two research uh, goals on the methodologies and infrastructures, and, and uh, one research goal on, on societal uh, transformation. They are extremely interlinked together, of course. I mean, we had to put them in different research goals, but of course they are inter extremely interlinked together, and uh, I will try to, to convince you on that. I will take snapshots on some of the different proposals very quickly. It will be developed in much more details uh, later during, uh, during the day. But in f for example, in research goal one on, on climate change and, and biodiversity loss, um, of course there are still many issues. As mentioned earlier by uh, Bertrand, we still need to do more research to in link climate crisis to um, uh, health impact. We still need to do more research to see how societies can uh, can adapt and, and be uh, resistant, and uh, of course how to integrate um, health impacts of all this. So there are still major issues here, major research goals here to be done um, in, in, in this field. And uh, concerning biodiversity loss, there's a lot that has been said about uh, biodiversity loss. In a way, there are still many questions that are still open on the impact of biodiversity loss on human health, for example. I mean, there are issues here. People think it's really important, but it's not enough to think. I mean, we need some more robust research to be able to, you know, uh, support uh, these uh, relationships. As you know, many people will be living in, in, in cities, and more and more people are living in cities. And um, uh, we also developed uh, research goals on um, objectives on, on uh, how to promote healthy urban environments and uh, air pollution. Uh, here we had, you know, some, of course, research on, you know, living in cities and the impact of, of living cities and the impact of uh, air pollution, uh, but also how to implement. I mean, you will see implementation research all along the different research goals. I mean, it's uh, sometimes we we have some good idea what to do, but how to implement the decision is really still an, an option. And this was actually highlighted several occasions by different stakeholders that we need to do more research on this. I will not go into the detail. This will be developed in much more detail um, a little bit later. 
Okay. Um, um, concerning now uh, chemicals and, um, and other uh, stressors, we had a number of um, um, uh, objectives and, and research uh, proposals here. Um, you, uh, you can see um, the, um, the, uh, this uh, iceberg here. This is actually in the chemical uh, strategy for sustainability. What it tells you is about out of like 100,000 chemicals that are on the market, we know a lot about 500, and we still, well, we know a little bit about 10,000 and 25, but still know nothing basically about maybe 70,000 chemicals. So there's even in the field where one would think that the, uh, much has been done and the people know a lot, even in that field, chemicals, I mean, there's still a huge amount of work to be done. And I'm not talking about the effect of mixtures and the effect of long time. That's a, a major, major issue. We obviously will not be able to do on the uh, uh, 99,000 uh, 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 chemicals what we have done on the 500, but we can learn from how we worked on those 500 chemicals to uh, do the work much uh, more quickly uh, on the other that we don't know. And this is actually what we've done, and that's where computational research is, is really so uh, important. Well, obviously, there is not only um, chemicals, physical stressors, are also uh, important, and uh, maybe there's less work on that, and they are extremely important. For example, if you take uh, noise, I mean, there's, uh, we all know now that noise has an uh, important effect on, on health, and not only because of hearing or because of mental effect or sleeping, it's also because of cardiovascular uh, effect. Obviously, radioactivity, uh, but also um, uh, light, you know, uh, the light, uh, excessive light, and during, especially the, during the night, has also some significant effect, and there's a real need for research uh, in, in this respect. Now, these are on the uh, different uh, stressors and the different systems that should be developed. There's definitely a need for methodologies, uh, how to better uh, identify, you know, the environmental burden of disease, and how to de you know, for develop new methodology and improve methodology for health impact assessment, how to develop methodology for implementation research, what should we do, how to, how to develop it. I mean, this is also an, an, an important issue. Uh, there are people working on it, and I think more research is definitely needed uh, in, in, in this respect. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, uh, we cannot do research without having very strong infrastructures. And um, there are uh, a number of proposals in, in, uh, in our agenda on infrastructures, on you know, chemicals, on data, uh, planetary health, uh, cohorts. Uh, these are needed. Uh, these should be developed. As mentioned also earlier, um, it makes sense to have a European coordination, and it makes sense to have uh, uh, nodes in the different countries that support this uh, European coordination to put this infrastructure at the service of uh, everybody. Okay, uh, the, the last uh, research goal is to promote research on transformational change in our environment, on climate change and, and health. And um, um, the difficulty here is that um, it's, it's nice to say that we need transformational change. We obviously, intuitively, everybody thinks it is really important because societies will have to adapt to these extremely major challenges uh, in, in the future. Um, so um, this can be done in, in a number of ways. The, the, the difficulty is that we had to identify some concrete proposals here. I mean, it has to be concrete because that's what uh, people ask. For example, uh, how to improve preparedness for future crises. We know that um, our, there's an agency now in Europe which is called HERA for unknown reasons, <laughs> which is, and that is uh, devoted to that. But I think there's also some research to be done on you know, how to be extremely well prepared, how to, to, to use all the available epidemiology on this. But also, um, how in our societies we have to adapt to these different uh, changes. Uh, what is our responsibility toward future uh, generation? You have these are the future generations here, and <laughs> they are really important. Digital transformation, all this, what is happening to us, I think there is more thought. We need social sciences, we need philosophy, we need ethics in there, and it was really important to have the, having them in, in, in HERA to um, have a very multidisciplinary approach uh, to these. I mean, there was al always, uh, you know, uh, discussions, because some of us, 
you know, are like sort of hard scientists and, and need some concrete stuff. And uh, we have also had social scientists and, and philosophy. And uh, that uh, the interaction, I think, was extremely fruitful uh, and really nice. Anyhow, um, we owe it to the next generations, I think, to do the work here and to develop the research to, to provide answers. Because the next generation will be confronted to these major issues as, you know, if I take only the climate crisis, I think this would be uh, a major issue for, for all of them. We had a very nice case studies. I mean, yesterday we were talking with uh, Linda, and she said, I didn't see one health in, in the case. But I think in, when we worked on COVID, you know, and we did it in a few weeks, actually, it was really a very hard work on the, well, we were all confined and we had to do this. But um, um, I think we took it, we took this COVID uh, work, this COVID proposal in a very large perspective from how environment and climate could support the emergence the spread of these uh, infections, what would be their health impact, and then what, would, what was the si uh, social and, and political response to this. And this is extremely important. And we also reflected on the socioeconomics of the recovery plans that were done at that time, and uh, uh, they are still now um, being not completely actually implemented, but that will be uh, implemented. So it was a, a really multidisciplinary reflection from how environment, how tr transformation, deforestation, for example, increases the, uh, supports the emergence of infection all the way to the recovery plans. So that, I think, was um, a really nice uh, work that, uh, that was done. All this was done with all of you um, and uh, all the partners of, of HERA. And it is time for me to, and for Manuelis, to thank you so much for your contribution. This was really important contribution. And... Um, uh, with this, I will, I will close this uh, summary of HERA, and I will let Manolis tell you more of... You can read this slide. Uh, that's what I intended to do. Bonjour. Bon dia. Calimera. HERA is a project européen, after all. And what a project. Uh, involving hundreds of uh, researchers all around Europe and hundreds of stakeholders all around Europe and uh, based uh, mostly in um, the 27 countries but as our WHO colleagues have always insisted not only Europe has 53 countries one unfortunately under ruins nowadays uh, but uh, we try to involve all Europe not only the EU 27 and we ended up with this uh, product, the, the, the agenda that is, I think, very high quality, actually, and usable, which is important. It's usable by different uh, communities. Um, and if I go back to Horizon 2020, long time ago, when we were discussing with the uh, Commission about Horizon 2020, the previous program, and the first years of Horizon 2020, where environment and climate was not there, it was absent, and we got alarmed, and we were discussing, and we were talking with the commission as representatives of our scientific societies, and we didn't have a very structured discourse, actually, at that time. We were talking about priorities, but uh, we didn't have it structured, and now with HERA we have it, and that's a major uh, advance. Things have a beginning and an end, we are in the official end of the project HERA, uh, but there are lots of things to do uh, in the future. And we discussed yesterday in the HERA board, and we will discuss in the, um, in the end of this session, um, of, of this meeting, about the future. And there are different scenarios from going from a loose collaboration between key institutes to establishing a world summit on climate, environment, and health in Davos uh, every year. And I am uh, joking, but not entirely. What was clear yesterday, and that's what we will discuss in the last session, is that first of all, the issue of environment, climate, and health is far too important 
not to continue working on that and identifying what we should be doing, first thing. Second thing, what we identified yesterday, that we have set up a magnificent network in Europe. We cannot leave it. We really have done so much work, it has gone so well, we cannot leave this network. And third thing that was clear yesterday, we have to go big. And if we do these three things, we will manage to continue this great work that we have been um, uh, doing all these years. We are late in time, so I will not take more time, but I want to say one final thing. I just want to acknowledge the outstanding work that Robert has done. Robert has been clear-sighted, he has been resolutive, he has been flexible, he has been diplomatic, he has humor, and really uh, has been the key person for the success of HERA. So I would really ask all of you to <laughs> applause the work of Robert. And we should move to, the, to our next session and we will come back about the future. We have an hour at the end of this meeting to discuss more about the future. Robert. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, yes, we have a big session in the uh, you know, uh, end of the day on, on the future, so be there. We have a, a break now. We, can, we have 15 minutes break. I think we have to come back at 10.30. It's, it's perfect. We are really on, on time. Everything is really working fine. 10.30, you can have a coffee and then uh, be here at 10.30. At